remember in the back in the beginning in, in Genesis where God says to Adam and Eve, don't eat of that tree? And we know that they did, didn't they? Because Satan came in and talked them into it. But what happened when it says the eyes of their understanding uh, suddenly was open? That tells us in the Hebrew that Satan now could begin to speak in people's minds. Now, I want to tell you this. Everyone say, thank you for telling me this. Satan can't read your mind. He cannot read your thoughts, but he suggests things to you, and they sound like they're your voice. How do we know when he's doing that, Pastor Kerry? Well, James, our pastor in the book of James, says that every good, every perfect gift comes down from the Father above. So, is doubt and unbelief good? Is it perfect? How about sickness? Is it good? Is it perfect? God doesn't use sickness to teach you something. A lot of times people go through hard times and they'll say, God, why are you allowing this in my life? And God says, I'm not. I'm waiting for you to stand on the word. You see? And so this is an educational training church. We want to give you the word so that you personally can apply it in your life so that you can have the victory God promises you to have. How many know that we have to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only? It's, it's easy just to say, oh yeah, I believe the word, I believe the word, but we don't do anything. And so we become set up. Okay. Now, how many here know that you have a drawer in your refrigerator? And as beautiful as that drawer is, you put your vegetables and everything in there. I call it the food spoiler. Out of sight, out of mind. It's kind of like what happens to us if we don't stay fresh before God and, and allow him to minister to us. It's very important. Then there's no sustaining power. And we become like that piece of lettuce in the vegetable ruining drawer, getting all wilted and everything. And then the devil comes right along and he says, see, such a Christian as you. You know, who's the author of condemnation? Who's the author of accusing and all that? We know it's the enemy. So what I have to share with you will transform your life only because God said it would. And if we would believe him, all things are possible to him that what? Believes. So say, I'm a believer. Poke your neighbor gently and say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. God said it, I believe it. All right, so we don't have a long sermon because we're going to have, get all of you involved in anointing with us what's up here. Now, here is one of the things that I did. My wife and I ordered fresh bottles, okay? Have never had anything in it. We could call them virgin bottles. Yes. Okay. Amen. And we took virgin oil with a virgin scent, and we filled each one of them. And then we prayed over them. And I'm going to show you how we did it so you can come into agreement. The Bible says, if two shall agree on earth... Where are you? As touching anything that they shall ask. It shall be done of our Father which is in heaven. Amen. That's in Matthew 18. Okay. All right. So let's get into this. Father, we thank you for your word. I appreciate these people that come to hear your word. Lord, it's not the man that shares the word. It's not the people that hear the word, but it's the word of God that transforms us. I can't wait sometimes, Father, when I speak, what you're going to say out of me. Because it isn't all calculated. It isn't all written down, Father. It's by your spirit. And Father, by your anointing, we welcome that presence. Oh, I can sense it right now, Lord. Come in and settle down in our midst, Lord. Let our hearts be curious and desirous after you. Like Mary, who sat at the feet of Jesus. Like blind Bartimaeus, that cried out all the more. And Jesus, you stood still. Like the woman with the issue of blood that crawled all the way through the crowds just to touch the hem at your garment. Father, we want to be that hungry for what you want to reveal to us. And what you want to show us so that we may have a victorious, successful life and be that example to our children and grandchildren in Jesus' name. And we all said, we've been doing a series called The Truth About. And this is called The Truth About the Anointing.
Now, I came out of those tent revivals. Remember, I talked to you a little shortly a little bit about them. And in those tent revivals, they did a lot of things that opened my eyes. I had a pastor who was a tent revivalist. He studied under A.A. A. Allen. Hello. He studied under Catherine Kuhlman. And learn the secrets of moving in the spirit and moving in the realm of God. Can you say amen? You are that kind of person. You are a believer in the Lord. You are a, a spiritual being. Yet we're in this physical body. So don't let your body dictate to you how spiritual you are. But rather let the word tell you who you are and act on it and you'll see that spirituality is an everyday thing for you. Can you say amen? amen? You know, and I get up in the morning, first thing I like to say to God is, God, you and me. You lead, I'll follow. It's going to be an adventure, God. And then I start looking for God to begin to do things. Not according to my will, but just because God does things. Can you say amen? How many had some answers to prayer this week? Amen. How many had little things that kind of came together and you're going, wow, thank you, God. Yes. Amen. All right, so good morning, church. Welcome to this morning's briefing. We're going to talk about the anointing today. This service is geared for you and to equip you with something that is anointing that anointed that you can apply. Now, we're going to talk to you about the anointing, what it is, how it can be applied. We're going to talk to you about little items like this. You'll see bottles of anointing oil and some prayer cloths down here. But how many here know it's not the item? It's not the created thing that does the work. It's us praying, praying and imparting the anointing from God into the items and then you placing that item wherever you feel the Lord's guiding and directing you so that God's presence can work day in and day out on anybody within 25 feet of that item. Now, let me just testify about me. Back before I was saved, I was one ornery person. Yeah, no terrible and people would come and share Jesus with me and I'd cuss them out one time a beautiful Baptist couple with a little girl came to my front doorstep and said we'd like to share Jesus with you I just got finished with a bong and sucked down about four or five beers okay now well, listen this is a your pastor doesn't do any of that anymore and this beautiful little couple came right up and said, we would like to tell you about Jesus. And I looked at him and said, Jesus? Blah, 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 blah. And they said, well, we don't want you to go in hell. And they're backing off the stage like this, you know. And says, hell? I'm already in hell. And I listened to this stuff coming out of my mouth. Unsaved. Stoned. And now look what God did with me. Let me got news for you. No matter how hard you run away from God, you're going to run right into him. Because the Bible says we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of what's done in our life. Now, you're smart. You started now. You didn't wait till the end of your life to try to get your life right. You started right now, and you realize that God is the one in you that makes your life right. It's not anything that you do or don't do. It's God working in you, can you say amen, to do his good will and his good pleasure. Say, God, work in me your good will and pleasure. Amen. Amen. All right, our opening text is in the book of Hebrews. What is the anointing, Pastor Kerry? What is the anointing? Okay. Now, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, it just says that in just the first couple of verses, I'm just going to quote it for you, okay? It says, in the beginning, God spoke to his children through the mouths of the prophets, but in these last days is spoken uh, unto us through his son. Can you say amen? So in the Old Testament, people had to find a prophet to hear what God's will was. How sad. 
And if there wasn't a prophet around, woo, huh, amen. Then they had to go to the priest. And every time they show up with the priest, the priest would always have that eye. What you've been doing. Yeah, he's cranky. You know, I got to go in and represent you and your family. What have you been doing? <laughs> you know, so the Old Testament, Testament was wonderful, but it had a whole lot of flaws. And one of the flaws was Jesus wasn't born. Jesus didn't die. Jesus didn't rise again yet. So the people by faith had to trust God and they had very little understanding of who God was. They thought that God could open up the ground and swallow them at any moment. They thought if God had a bad day, don't talk to him. Hello. So they had a bad concept in the Old Testament, not always. And it was the men and the women that were close to God that knew the will of God. Hello. Now let's fast forward that over into the New Testament. You and I have the will of God living in our heart. His name is Jesus. And when we said Jesus come into our heart, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit came in and filled us with all things that pertain to life and godliness. Inside your spirit, there's no sin. Inside your spirit now, if you're born again, God lives. Therefore, Paul always said, if you're going to have success, you've got to walk from your spirit. Not from your head, not from your flesh. But you got to walk from your heart, from the inside out. Because all our life, up until the time we got born again, we all walk from the outside in. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. You hurt my feelings. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'd like to crucify you. But thank God I'm not in the flesh. Can you say Amen. Come on, laugh with me a little bit. You see, religion has done a terrible job on people because it, you have to be just right. You got to do everything just right. Lose your joy. You can't follow God. God says you're a child. He wants you to enjoy Him, have a party in His behalf. And I don't mean the old kind, I'm in a celebration. Amen. Amen. How many here going to heaven? How many know there's not a devil in hell that can keep you from going? You need to remind the enemy when he's laying, laying it heavy on you. Or he's using somebody to come against you. Smile and say, I'm on my way to heaven. You're really a mess, aren't you? And you're trying to convince me not to be happy. I don't preach myself happy. Now listen to this. Let me talk about the anointing for just a minute, okay? The word for anointing, we have two languages. In the Old Testament, it's Hebrew. Say Hebrew. And in the New Testament, it's Greek. Everyone say Greek. Now, I did the Hebrew and the Greek for you just to let you know what the anointing is, okay? First of all, you cannot separate the anointing of God from God. Amen. Although we can apply the anointing of God, it seems separate from God. God showed me an, ex an expression. How many ever made bread? And you get the dough all gooey in there and you're kneading it and everything like that. And bread dough is gooey, isn't it? And then you put the flour in there and you try to get that bread all working. I did it old-fashioned way. And then you get those little machines that do all of that for you. But you notice about dough is you could pull a piece of that dough out and you could eat it. You could cook it, make a little muffin out of it. You can do things with that dough because that dough came from the original big loaf dough. So the anointing is the same way. God is the big loaf. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, God. He's the big power. And we're able with, with his permission to pull parts of that anointing out and stick it places. Where it needs to be. Where it needs to be. You see, where the anointing is, the Spirit of God is. God is. So what we want to do, if people don't want to bring the anointing into their home, we go in and we put an anointing cloth in their house without them knowing it. So God is at least there working whether they know that or not. You got somebody sick in a mental institution. We anoint the chocolate and send it that way because they throw prayer cloths away. 
Folks, whether you know it or not, there's a lot of people that are in the occult, love to hang out in nursing homes and mental institutions because there's a lot of demons there and they play with demons. So they know the anointed cloth, they know all what the Christians, you know. Come on. You're talking to a pastor who worked with the police department in Enumclaw and Buckley to destroy satanic covens. We got rid of five satanic kill people covenants up there in Wilkeson and Carbonado. If not, I have the articles there for you to read. Back when I was just a little youthy Christian minister, the police called me up and said, we need help. Satan's afraid of you. And he's afraid of you when you know who you are in Christ. Amen. Satan's not afraid of you when you're acting out your own self. He's not afraid of you when you're walking by your own mentality. You know, lean not to our own understanding. Because that's where he lives. He lives in the reasoning realm. We live in the spirit. He can't go in the spirit, but we can are you with me? Now take a minute and think about what I just said, okay? What's the anointing? Well, the Hebrew word for anointing means to consecrate, set apart, smear for the use of God. So in the Old Testament, they anointed the tabernacle, they anointed the chairs, the altar, the uh, everything was anointed. If it was going to be used for God, everything was anointed with oil. Hello? The priests, they were anointed with oil. Those that serve and brought food to the temple were anointed. So every little item, and here the Lord showed me a long time ago, but he, I want to bring it up to you, and that is everything that's created is made out of molecules. Say molecule. And if you were reduced, all the space that you're made up of, you were reduced to no space at all, but all one solid item, you would be no bigger than a half teaspoon and you'd weigh the same amount. You'd be that small. But because we're full of hot air, no, because our molecules are spread out and we have shape and body thing, you can take the molecules out of something that's created and impart God into it. Because who's the creator of all things? So if he made napkins, you can impart the anointing into napkins. Huh? If he made the food you're eating, when you're praying over your food, why do we make it so religious? Oh, Lord, bless our food. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, release the anointing in the food you eat. Listen, the other day I was at one of those fast food restaurants not my choice. And I had the worst burger in the world. I mean, how can you mess up a burger that shows you how to make it on a, on a poster? Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Make sure it's warm. Put the pickle here and the onion there. Boom. Right? You ever been to, uh, what is it, a uh, company? Everybody loves it. Olive Garden. You ever gone into the kitchen and looked at the wall? It tells them how to make the dish. That's pretty scary. God tells us in his word how to do the work while he does the power. Can you say amen? How to do the word while he backs you. Can you say amen? And God went with them, confirming the word with them. With miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen. So we've got a bunch of things that my wife and I have already anointed. And we're going to have you also add your agreement. And then we're going to impart these things out to you. And we want you to use them as the Spirit directs you. Um, the first time that I was saved, my wife put an anointed prayer cloth in my pillow. Guess who dreamed about God all the time? I wasn't saved. You got a wayward person in your family that are rebelling and, and have been listening to the wrong spirit. 
get that thing underneath their pillow or their pillow or into their toy area, underwear drawer, it doesn't really matter. Be sharp, wise as a serpent, and gentle as a what? Yeah. That's right. What, brother? Dude, this was a few years ago. I was having problems with, with the spirit in my granddaughter's room, and I came and passed her night. We took the prayer cloth, anointed, prayed, and so on and so forth. We took it home, and Susan put it between the mattress and the box spring, and that pastor, I mean, uh, that spirit left our granddaughter alone. How old was she? Three. Okay, now listen, moms and dads, grandparents, always sit down with your, your kids, your children, and interview them if they're hearing voices. And talk to them. You know, don't be weird or scary or anything. Just talk to them. And then you'll know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, give me a call. We'll do it for you. Because there was one time, like he said, a spirit will harass a child, okay, if the parents are disobedient. See, if mom and dad are serving God, there's no way the enemy can get in. If mom and dad aren't serving God and they're arguing and they're fighting and there's strife in the house, you better keep an eye on your kids. Someone say amen. Amen. This is warfare here, folks. We're talking about real stuff. We're not talking about religious stuff, okay? Nor do I want you to be in fear. But you should be wise. If you know there's been a thief out breaking into houses, who's going to lock their house? You are. So what I do is I inform you and teach you, and then I believe, God, that you'll take that and practice it at home during the week. Can you say amen? So again, the Hebrew word means to smear, set aside, consecrate for the work of God. So everything in the Old Testament that was used of God, we're all anointed. Can you say amen? Now in the New Testament, it's Greek. And it's basically the same, but the Greek literally means to consecrate and or for God to smear and to rub his presence into an item. Do you remember that what it said over in Isaiah 61 and uh, Mark, uh, excuse me, Luke 4 and, and uh, Matthew 4, it says where Jesus stood and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The recovering of sight to the blind that set a liberty of them that are bound. To open the eyes and the ears of those that have been oppressed to preach the everlasting year of the Lord. That's what that anointing will do. All of those things. What Jesus has accomplished will be, is imparted in the oil. So if Jesus saves... The oil won't save, but the presence there to get someone saved will be there. You see the difference? Instead of them fighting the lies and the enemy and the presence of sickness and all, in this is the anointing against COVID. We put that in there. So if some kind of COVID stuff is floating around, it won't come near your dwelling. Amen. No weapon formed against me will prosper. prosper. Huh? Amen. Amen. So, what are you believing for? Oh, watch out. God, do his job. God will do his job. You just sit down in him and believe. Amen. I did a sermon uh, about four months back, and it is called Sit, uh, Walk, and Stand. Sit down in Jesus, learn about him. Walk with Jesus so the enemy can't harass you. Amen. And have a stand against all evil. Amen. So you sit down in Christ. Let him run the show. Follow what he tells you to do. You walk with Christ so no one can harass you. Why? Because they have to go through God to get to you. Because you're not out there sinning and acting like a doofy. You know what I mean? Sorry if I called your name. Doofy. I, I try to pick one that won't be har harmless. You know, and then having done all to stand, the Bible says, stand, having done all to stand, stand therefore. In other words, there's a place that you stand in Christ. 
that Satan can't touch you. No, Pastor Kerry, if that was true, how come I don't experience it? Because you're doing your own thing still. We got to get you to do God's thing and have fun at it. It's totally exciting. Rather than you testing the waters and getting your head out there and getting whacked by somebody or something. Hello? Frankly, if it's hot outside, I appreciate an air conditioner. And if it's cold outside, I appreciate a heat pump. I want it to be brought into the realm where I'm comfortable. Now listen to me carefully. Some Christians today think that God is their problem. He doesn't want them to be comfortable because if they're too comfortable, then they're going to backslide and then blah, 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 blah. You know, that's human reasoning. God said, if you become comfortable and content in me, then the enemy can't touch you. Because he has to go through the Father, then the Son, to get to you. Because the Bible says, our life is in Christ. Everyone say, my life's in Christ. And I'm hidden in God. So if your life is in Christ, that means you're in Christ. And if you're hidden in God, that means Christ and you are in God. So what's the devil going to do? He's going to wait for you to act foolish and, and get all upset and stick your face out there so you get smacked. So God, teach us how to walk with you where the enemy can hardly do a thing. Amen. How many here want to agree with that? Amen. Start praying it. Yeah. Well, Pastor Kerry, if I pray the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, then I must not have believed for it when I first prayed. Well, the Bible says, seek and keep on seeking and you will what? So I asked the Lord about it. In the seek, keep on seeking, God. What did you mean about that? He says, you seek for one thing, and when it shows up, don't stop seeking. Look for the next thing I have for you. Look for the next thing I have for you. Seek, and you shall what? But what do we do? We get the thing we want, and then we stop looking. (laughs) So the Greek says, seek, and you keep on seeking, and you will find and keep on finding. Knock, and keep on knocking. Because the door will be open and more doors will be open to you. In other words, we're accelerating and growing in God. Can you say amen? We haven't got any time to understand and look at what the enemy's doing because he's lost. He's going to hell. Why should I be concerned about what he's doing unless it affects me personally? But you're covered. Not only that, we're going to equip you with some anointed items and you're going to go do some warfare stick it in your wife's car huh stick it in your husband's underwear drawer come on now why don't you think Satan likes to get into places bring God in there instead You carry God around. Don't you know that? You carry God around, Linda. You're walking around and God's in you. Not only that, but when you're focused on him, you're walking around in God. For in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Acts 17, 28. So we can either walk outside and do our own thing for God and get a limited amount of success. Or we can seek God first thing in the morning, say, Lord, what's your instructions for me today? And he might say, do this, do this, and do this, and the rest of the day is yours. Yeah, yeah. How many has ever done the one thing you needed to do and the rest of the day you kind of had off? You see, if you do what God asks you to do, it's so thorough and so right and so perfect That God gives you a time to enjoy him and play. Now there are some people, I must say, can't even go on a vacation without sinning. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, I'm just joking with you. They can't have a good time without pulling out a beer or wine or something weird. 
Listen, that's not going to send you to hell doing that. But I tell you what will get you in big trouble is when you had one too many and you act like an idiot. Satan loves that. And that's how people get into accidents and how he sets people up to die early because they won't submit to God on a daily basis. Now, I'm not talking about religion. So God can help us overcome ourselves. The first person we need to overcome is not the devil. It's you. We need to overcome. There's two of us. We need to overcome our old man or old woman. I don't like to use that term. <laughs> I look to Peggy, the most innocent person in here, you know, and say the, the old one. You know, I, I don't mean old in age. I mean mature in the Lord. Can you say amen? Okay. We got by that. You can tell I'm, you know, I, I haven't gone to all the eloquent places and schooling. I, I have a lot of PhDs. You can call me Dr. Fahrenheit. So many degrees, you know. So anyway, no. The idea is our experience with God is a school. And you're in school right now with God. And he's teaching you. And say, Lord, keep teaching me. Keep sharing with me. Keep showing me the things you want me to know. And Lord, keep the confusion out of my life. And remember, the Lord gave us the Lord's Prayer. Remember, that's a model prayer. That's what to cover when you pray. It's not to pray that prayer. Heavenly Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. No, it's to cover those things. How many know that God takes care of your need? How many's ever had your need met and you don't know how that happened, but it just happened. How many's ever had something like that happen? We have, we have people deliver food to our doorstep here. Wow! So I don't have to go to the store as often. <laughs> Although I went to the store last night for you guys, I stuffed some wonderful peppers with cream cheese and all that kind of stuff. But they're not very hot, but they're, they're good. But I had to go to the store. And you know when I went to the store? It's a great place to witness for the Lord. To share your faith a little bit. Amen. Somebody says, man, you look happy. And I said, you want to know why? Tell them. You see, God is not mad at the world now. Listen to me. He, he gave his son because he loved them. And all he wants people to do in their terrible position is to get their know their son and surrender to him. And when they surrender to him, the son will work in them with the spirit and get them to become something they thought they never could. So everywhere you go, tell them God loves them. God wants to help them. Never bring a message of condemnation. God's going to get you. My cousin used to do that to me all the time. I'd, I'd blow it in the area and he'd say, God's going to get you for that. And I, I kept getting so bothered by that. I said, Lord, what's up with that? And he says, didn't I already get you when you accepted me? I said, yeah. He says, that's fear tactics. People who want to control other people will slam out a word or try to manipulate a situation. God removes that from us. You don't have to manipulate anything. He's in charge. Just say, Lord, you're in charge today. Help me hear your voice clearly. Meanwhile, I'm just going to have a good time enjoying you and doing what I know is right. Wow. And when you pray that prayer first thing in the morning, you'll find out that half your day the problems thereof seem to go away. And you go, how did that happen? Well, you asked. We have not because we? Yes. All right. So the anointing there means to consecrate, smear, and to impart the presence of God. Can you say amen? All right. Let's go to our first scripture. Acts chapter 10, please. Now, again, it's a very important thing to remember. The very items that we anoint aren't what does the work. It's God's presence in the item. Can you say amen? It's not like a cross you wear around your neck. Ooh, I got my anointed oil in my purse. There you go, Satan. I got my anointing oil in my purse. No, we're not amulets nor trinkets. Not crosses. There's nothing wrong with crosses and all. But that's not what the devil's afraid of. He's afraid of the anointing. So, anoint your house. Anoint your car. 
Anoint your children, grandchildren. Anoint everything that you can anoint. Dedicate it and consecrate it to God. I can tell you, I had a truck. The truck went over 500,000 miles. Never burned a bit of oil. And the only thing I can thank God about is I put my hands on it and say, make it run, God. Amen. Then I gave it away and he put another 200,000 miles on it. That was your dad, Amanda. Uh -huh. And I go, how can that be? And God, I make, God makes everything work better. Amen. Bring him in everything. Get him involved. He's not going to condemn you. He wants to enhance you, enrich you. He wants to strengthen you. We're the ones that need it. So Acts 10.38, look at, listen how this says. Now how God anointed, smeared, set aside, consecrated Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Spirit and with what? Power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now, that anointing scripture on Jesus is the same as the Jesus we imparted in here. Doesn't change. It's like the dough. We just put a chunk of God into this stuff. Can you say amen? It's something God asks us to do. All right, we have the anointing one in our life. Everyone say, how many have Jesus? Amen. Put your hand high, Satan looks for no hands. Amen. Amen, you have Jesus in your heart. So, listen to what this scripture says about us. 2 Corinthians 1, 21, 22 says this. Now he who establishes us, you and I, is Christ and has anointed us. See, you're anointed. In God, who also has sealed us and given us a spiritual guaranteed that we're going to heaven. Can you say amen? amen? So you got an anointing placed in you. Now, folks, that anointing is like muscle. The more you use it, the more toned it becomes. Hello? God in you is like muscle. The more you act in God, the more you try to follow God, the stronger you become and the more like God you become. It's not by a work, it's just the exercise of your faith that causes us to tone. Can you say amen? amen. When we pray, we get an answer to prayer, we go, thank you, Lord. You've just been exercised. And when you lead somebody to the Lord or you share Jesus with somebody, even though you don't see a lot of results, you're exercising. You're toning up. He that is a doer of the word is blessed in what they do, Scripture says. Blessed in what you do. So even if you go out and it doesn't seem to work out right, God says, it's a blessing anyway because you did it for me. You didn't do it for yourself. You did it for me. You didn't do it for yourself. You did it for me. You didn't do it to be noticed by other people. Hello? And guess what? If you promote God, God will promote you. Hello? If you promote you, God will humble you. Hello? We have this old song we used to sing. It goes, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Remember that one? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. And he will live you up. So our best way up with God is down in humility. As we humble ourselves, God exalts us. And as we exalt ourselves, God embarrasses or humbles us. That no flesh can glory or take credit from God. How many here learned something so far? Good, let's get started in our lesson, shall we? <laughs> All right, so say I'm anointed from God because God anointed me, not because I'm good. So remember, God doesn't reward you for being good. He rewards you for accepting his son. Because we can be good, but our good isn't good enough. Unless we have Jesus in our heart. Then when he's involved in the good that we do, 
It is him that doeth the work and the good that God does in us. We, we give it out by actions and works. We were created for good works and then God gets glorified. But if we go around and say, well, listen, I was a Sunday school teacher for years. This is not my first parade. We'll use that term. I don't want to. <laughs> And you know what? You present that before God and God's going to laugh at you. Yes. Going, you can't even breathe without my help. What are you trying to take credit for? We don't know because that's what religion teaches us. Religion teaches us that we're of the first church. Bless God. And we do it this way. No, we belong to God and we're his children. We do it his way. Can you say amen? <clears throat> all right. God had all of the things anointed that he used in the Old Testament or wanted to use. Let me just read it real quickly. It's in number seven. Verses 1 and 2 says this. Now it came to pass when Moses had finished setting up the tabernacle that he anointed it and consecrated it and all of its furnishings and furniture and the altar and all these utensils so that he anointed them and consecrated them. That's what we're doing here. Hello? Yeah. Now let me ask you, why was it so important that the high priest who came in and represented the sins of the people of Israel be cleansed from his sins. So the priest, before he could even go in and represent the entire nation of Israel, had to cleanse himself and his family before he could go into the Holy of Holies. Do you know why he had to do that? Be Otherwise he would die because the flesh can't stand in the presence of God. Thank God for the New Testament. See, in the Old Testament, you couldn't get into the presence of God. It killed you. That's why it was hidden in the tabernacle with a curtain that only the priest who was sanctified, anointed, could go in there and represent the sins of the people. Aren't you glad we learned the New Testament? Because Jesus went in once and for all for you and I. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to have... Sack blood sacrifices. You don't have to sacrifice a neighbor's cat to go into the tabernacle. <laughs> Just joking. God forbid. <laughs> Could you imagine the Old Testament? What that would be like, brother? All right, we're going to go to the temple today. Get your lambs and your sheeps all ready. So you know we're in the New Testament. Now listen, Jesus became the last sacrifice. So when we accept him as our Lord and Savior... His blood is applied on us in the spirit. You can't see it, but Satan can. Satan can see the blood of Jesus and has to pass over it. But you can't see it. So everyone say this with me. I plead the blood of Jesus over my dreams, over my body, that when I sleep, I will be refreshed and renewed. Do you do that? Do you pray that at night? If you do, you won't have another bad dream, ever. But we don't think what to do, when to do it. Sometimes we just have to be reminded and, and taught. The blood repels any darkness. And the Bible says if we walk in Jesus or walk in the light, now listen, the blood of Jesus is applied to us daily. So you don't have to say, oh, Lord, I thought a bad thought. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Oh. Oh, Lord, I did a bad thing. Forgive me, forgive me. I, what are you doing? <laughs> you say, Lord, I'm a human. I just want to follow you. You're covered. Amen. You're covered. Yes. All that Jesus went through, do you think that he left any of it out? No. But sometimes we get this idea that like, for example, this is what I was taught in Bible college. That when you put on the armor of God, first of all, you don't put it on. God puts it on you. Be careful because you can't turn your back on the enemy because the armor doesn't have anything for the back. How many ever heard that ridiculous yes. teaching? Yes. If you look up the word shield of faith, it means a portal of faith. It means you're in an absolute yes. bubble. Your back's covered, your front's covered, your sides are covered, your head's covered, your, your body's covered. Yeah. 
But until you realize what you have, Satan's going to sell you a bag of goods. Hello? And he has been. Some of you still have got stuff that's wrong in your thinking. That you need to poof, get rid of, say, man. And you know what's neat? You can say, God, if there's anything that I'm believing or acting on that's not really scriptural, get it out of me, will you, God? So you don't have to worry about what it is. And he'll start plucking stuff out of you, and you'll go, oh, that's, that's amazing. I changed and didn't even notice it until the next day. Because our eyes are focused on whom? Jesus. And they're not on the world. Get your eyes off the world. It's passing away. Get your eyes off of other people. Please don't put your eyes on me. I'm just your friend and your pastor. I'm human. Okay? But if you put me up on a, some kind of pedestal, if I do anything wrong, then your salvation is a question because you got your eyes on man and not on God. Okay, so don't do that to me, and I won't do that to you. We'll love each other through our flaws and, and our shortcomings and build each other up. And then last but not least, never stick your eyes on yourself. Because whether you know it or not, I'm going to say this, please don't get mad at me, you do. You, we do. So you ask God, God, Began to get me to refocus so I'm not so much concentrated on where I am with you. Because a lot of people compare themselves with other people. Yep. What do you mean? They say, well, I can't be like Sister Peggy. She's got it together. Yep. And immediately you feel defeated because your eyes are on what? Man. Yep. Eyes on Jesus. Amen. Why? Because Jesus will never tell you or discourage you in any way. Oh, Lord, you know, I blew it, and God will be quiet. He won't say anything. Oh, yeah, he did. No. <laughs> he just quiet. And then you say, but, Lord, I know you're with me. And he, all of a sudden, the presence of God comes. And he says, and if you will open up and let me into that area of your life that you got guarded so good, I'll come in, and I'll flood it with my life, and you'll actually become better than you were. How many are hungry for that? So this anointing will... Will work, all right? A couple more scriptures, I'm done, and then we'll go ahead and anoint it, okay? All right. So, remember they anointed everything. So, we're going to anoint some oil, some cloths, and I'm going to tell you what we anointed it with so you can get an agreement. How many know that communication is really important? Amen. If, if you're communicating with your wife or your husband, they have to know where you're at. You've got to let them know. God's working with me in a conversation with my wife and whether I should say or not say certain things. First of all, you, God needs to get all accusations out of our mouth. What do you mean? To confront and, and to accuse somebody is the work of the devil and not the work of a Christian. Amen. God knows everything, doesn't he? Well, somebody's got to confront them. Why don't you pray and ask God to send somebody else other than you? <laughs> Hello? It's kind of weird. It's like the alcoholic gets delivered, serves the Lord for a year, and decides that he's called of God and goes back in and serves alcoholics. Are you an idiot? <laughs> oh, God told me. No, God didn't tell you that. Go back into the cesspool you came out of. Come on, folks, we've got way too many things that we accept as gospel. I can minister to people with no foot now because I've gone through all of this, and I can be gentle. Have you ever heard that kind of teaching? And if you've gone through that, you can be more compassionate. Well, let's give you all cancer. So you know, compassionate, you ding-dongs. Let's not embrace things like that. That's not the truth. Hello? I said Hello? Christians, it's time to be ready. I mean, God could come at any moment. There's nothing stopping him now. Just take a look at the mess out there. I'm actually not rejoicing over the mess, but God's been telling me for years this is coming. And then when it shows up, I'm going, oh. 
Come on, we all like that a little bit. All right, finishing. In Acts chapter 5, listen to this, 14 through 15, it's dealing with the anointing. And it says, and the believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, and they brought the sick out of the streets, laid them at the beds and the couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also, the multitudes gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing the sick, those that were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Shadow of Peter. It's the anointing. Wasn't Peter shadow? Is they knew, just like the woman with the issue of blood, if I could get close to Jesus, I'll get it. Amen. Folks, every day you can get not only close to Jesus, but you can get into Jesus and Jesus into you and your day start off perfect every day when you start it off with God first. Okay. Acts 19, 11, and 12, listen to this. Now God works unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even the handkerchiefs or the aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. That's what we're doing here. So you got somebody, how about your friend that's an alcoholic? You're going to slip it in his truck. Come on, we're fishers of men. Yes. You got to make sure your worm doesn't have B.O. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're catching people. Yes. Catching them. Yes. Bringing them to Jesus. Amen. Now, folks, I don't have a membership here. God told me, do not have a church membership. Because in the last days, they will accuse you of being a cult. I have nothing for you to join, but join God. Amen. And, and if you love what God is doing here, then be faithful here. Yes. But there isn't any signing you up and, and, and putting you under obligations and rules and regulations. That's not God. No, God said, come. Come. You don't even have to really dress up to come. Come. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come just as you are to worship. Come just as you are before your God every morning. Come. Amen. What happens? He gives you his wisdom instead of yours. He gives your refreshing and strength, his refreshing and strength instead of yours. When you were tired when you went in, you're not tired when you leave. God does those things. Don't you crave them? Don't you want them? Listen. A couple of things I want to give you, and then we're going to pray over our items, okay? The anointing can and will do what God purposes it to do. We already prayed for God to have his will be done in there, my wife and I. Now we're going to have you guys join in with us. Okay? Every creative thing can be anointed or imparted with God's blessing. Now I had a beautiful brother. He's a good brother, but he doesn't know anything about false idols. There's an idol. I'm, my last name is Oliphant. So people give me elephants. Little elephants, little elephant trinkets. So I got a whole load of, and I keep them all. I got stuffed elephants, and I got one that talks on my wall and sings a song. You know, why? We're the elephants. You know, it's just one of those fun things, right? But now you got God's name, and God wants to bring you all kinds of reminders of how much he loves you and cares for you. He just wants you to pay attention to him. To talk with the interchange. Lord, isn't this not cool? I'm driving my kids to school. Hallelujah. has been for a long time. And you're just talking to God like he's in the passenger seat. That's what he wants you to do. 
Just talk with them, 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 talk with them. Hello? So we can impart to you the very things we need. Are you with me? Now it's up to us to believe God. Can you say amen? So here's what we're believing for, and then we're going to bring everything in. I realize some of you can't leap up and pray over this item. So we're going to bring it towards the back of the church where Tina is and people that can't get, jump up. So you can get close enough, put your hands on it, okay? All right, so here's what we're agreeing with. Number one, we're here to impart prayer in a description with words. Words are like a paintbrush. Now listen, say I need to know this. What I'm about to share with you is make all the difference. When you pray, how many here love praying? How many pray? I know you pray. Here's the key. Don't pray from the top of your head. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, bring it out of your gut. God lives in your spirit, not here. So when you pray, stop for a minute. Focus on him and then pray out from yourself. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth or accomplishes much. Heartfelt prayer is bringing it out of your spirit. So you can say, Father, in Jesus' name, you can bring it out of your spirit, see? In Jesus' name. Instead of just saying, oh, Lord, we just... Hope that you're going to be with everybody today. Now, I'm not trying to put that down. Please, please. But that's how Satan wants us to pray. Because there's no power from our head. It's all located in our spirit. So we have to, when we talk, learn to project God in the words that you say. For by your words, you're justified. And by, Jesus said, by your words, you're condemned. So you want to let your words be few. And... Full of heart. Amen. You know what's wrong with the songs today as versus some of the songs 20 years ago? Heart. Heart. They had actually something to say and, and actually meant something instead of yeah, woman, you're nothing but a blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you about words. Words are how Satan puts spells on people. And words are how God blesses people. So in songs, there are usually what? Words. So you got your favorite song. You're driving down the road and it says, Oh, you are your own person. You don't need anyone else. You're confident in yourself. Blah, 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 blah. And it's a great beat and you're just cooking a boogie in and everything. But at the same time, you're proclaiming curses out of your mouth. Now, who's playing us as a fool? Satan is. Don't be a fool. I love what, what is it, um, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 1 says. It says, keep your foot when you go in the house of God, for it's better for you to be quiet than speak the sacrifices of fools. When I read that scripture, I went, oh, that's me. <laughs> we want to come into church, and we want to talk about all that we're doing and all that kind of stuff. You need to be quiet. Have God speak to you first, and then what does he want you to do? How does he want you to encourage others? Come on now. I'd rather do it his way because it's forever. Do it my way, it might just fall to the ground. All right, so. Here's what we do in our prayer. First of all, we impart prayer from our spirit with words that we want. Okay. Words that we want to work. This anointing will break demons off of people. Will cure people from wanting alcohol. They won't want to smoke after getting near this. And we start declaring with words what we desire God kind of anointing he wants in there. You see, you see what I mean? Say, I got it. So we'll move to number two. Then we impart the anointing and the anointing oil, and we do it in the name of Jesus. So when you put this cloth or this oil, you touch the oil, and then you, you dab and dedicate, you don't need much. You don't smear it on everything. But use the name of Jesus. 
Because when you speak the name of Jesus, all the prayers that gone out onto this is released just in that name. So when I go, da 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 ba da da Lord, this is what I desire. I, I, I pray this, Lord God, that you'll guide their steps and they won't fall into that trap that's set, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. And see, you brought a package and you've laid it on the altar. And God says, okay. He says, bring your petitions before me so that I might fulfill them. See how powerful you are? And yet the, self, the devil wants to make you think that you're just holding on until the end comes. You ever how you doing? I'm hanging in there. You ever seen that poster? True story. A blimp went up in the air back in the days when they had the dirigibles, and they caught fire a lot of the times. This one in 1925 went up in the air, and about 100 guys were trying to hold it down. It lifted them about two, three, 400 feet in the air, and they were all hanging off the rope. And one by one began to fall to their death. I mean, this is all documented. And finally, the wind subsided, and the thing, they got the thing down. More people were able to get the rope, but kind of somehow settled back down, and and there was one guy hanging on. And I said, you were up there for an hour and a half. How did you manage? People were falling to the death. He says, I was watching what those ding-dongs were doing. He says, they were all holding on to the rope. I just wrapped the rope around me and let it hold on to me. Wrap Jesus around you. Let him hold on to you. You stop trying to believe God. You just flow. You're his child. Moms, dads, grandparents, how do you feel about your little children? You, you think God is any less? Even when they make a mistake, even when we make a mistake, he's not any less loving to us. We just think he's going to come with a big hand and whack us. This is not whack me. What's that name of that thing? You go bink, 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 and when you stick your head up, you bang him. Is it whack, whack a mo? I don't know. I just like to whack them. Can you say amen? All right, you can tell that I'm just as, as human as you are, but I want to tell you that God didn't teach me for over 45 years this stuff for me to just keep it to myself. God, when my wife and I got married, God says, I want you to do a ministry. Oh, Lord, I'd rather. I was a nice member at Pial Four Square, and I was position to be on staff and be a part of that church at that time it was only about 400 people now it's like 5,000 or something and you go oh why'd you turn that down Pastor Kerry because God told me to do this not that you don't go to the church of your choice you go to the church of his choice because he knows what's better for us than we do come on I'm enough said there so here's the next point the anointing, when we anoint an object, we put a di diameter. How much around that object do we want the anointing to work? 20 feet? 30 feet? And you might say, 100 feet! Well, can you believe for 100? I can believe for 25 feet. No problem. 25 feet, put it in the center, 25 feet in diameter. So you stick that in the middle of your house, Within 25 feet, any people comes into that, they're suddenly going to get sense God's presence. And you can stop them and say, you sense that? Oh, uh, yeah, what is it? Now you can share Jesus with them. We're fishing. We're fishing for souls, folks. Somewhere out there is the very last soul that has to come to Jesus before the end comes. Are you going to be the one that reaches them? Are you going to be one that sits in the pew and hopes someone else does? Not, not to make you feel bad. Who knows? It could be your neighbor. You lead him to the Lord and suddenly, poof, we're gone. What happened? God says, that was the last one I was waiting for. So if you're here and under the sound of my voice and you're still being stubborn, keep on being stubborn. Jesus will delay his coming till we can get more people saved. <laughs> I used to have a guy say to me, and some of you know him, but I won't mention his name. He's a wonderful man. He'd always say, when I read my Bible, God always rebukes me. 
he was reading it like this. And Judas went out and hung himself. Go thou and do likewise. <laughs> Some people read their Bible that way. All right, I'm finishing. So with <clears throat> we want a, a perimeter. And the anointing has light in it. And God is light and in him is no darkness also. When we anoint, and that, it will drive out all darkness. It will flee. So when you had oppression and sickness in your home, it will completely get rid of it. How will it do that? Because remember, you're releasing Jesus and not oil. You're releasing Jesus and not a prayer cloth. And Jesus will be and do what he says in his word he will. So the next thing we do is we place the cloth or the anointed piece in Jesus' name in a bed or pillows, sock drawer, car, house, doesn't matter. So win the lost and push back evil. Can you say amen? Now, this is just a tool. Without the anointing, it's worthless. Next point is, then, eyes back on Jesus once you release the name of Jesus. Once you anoint your house, you put it, you place this item, eyes back on Jesus, and just thank him every day for it working. Say amen. Please use these items wisely. Don't just start scattering to the wind. Jesus said, don't. Cast your pearls before the swine. So your job is, as a soldier in the Lord, kind of just, you know, you're going to go in stealth and you're going to start anointing things. You've got something, someone in your family who's just doing everything but God. Don't panic. Satan just wants to get at you about that. you got a secret weapon, your prayers and anointing. Are you with me? Now, I'm open for questions. Got any questions concerning what we're about to do? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what if you want to minister to someone that you aren't going to be in their home or any place where you can minister to them? Can you put it on yourself? Yes. And believe that when you go visit them, that that anointing will touch them? Yes. But you don't even need to use a cloth. Just ask God to spike you up. You are, you're, a, you're a vessel. You're like a glass. And you can be either filled with God or filled with yourself. So it says we're vessels. Vessels of honor. Right? So get yourself filled with God. How do we do it? Stay under the tap. Remember we used to party? You were the guy that hang out around the keg? <laughs> Hello? Hang around the tap. His name is Jesus. Sorry, I'm relating it to it, but it's still, you can understand. So you just get filled, and so you take an item. So we filled these bottles for you. These are virgin bottles, never had anything in it. And it's not full all the way, but there's plenty of oil there for you to oil all, just about everything for a year. And so what you do with this is, we prayed up, but we're going to pray over it again. You, you take your lid off there, and you just... Get a little oil on you. You don't want to smear stains all over your house. Now watch me. In the name of Jesus, I mind everything that tries to come back into this area. I release the anointing of God and sanctify it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Everybody that sits in that chair is going to get zapped. Amen. You say, oh, that sounds too much like trinkets and all that. Yeah, but you haven't hung around God like I have. He had everything in the Old Testament anointed. Why? Because man was so defiled, it would defile everything. So he had to sanctify it. Now, folks, we're not much different. Some of us have things that we have to work through and, and get changed. So this, a tool, will help. Another thing is these cloths. We cut them large enough for you to be creative. What do you mean, Pastor Curry? Well, they're soaked in the anointing. If you're smart, it doesn't matter how big the cloth is, does it? You know, take this and cut it into 20 pieces for 20 wonderful suspect people. 
or things. Don't just stick the whole cloth in there. If you, don't, you want to, that's can. Be smart. Now, one more thing I'll bring up, and then we're going to bring it right up here and have everybody lay their hands on it now. Okay, but how many here remember the woman that Jesus pointed out to his disciples that she gave two mites, remember? This is a lesson I want to, I want to point out. She only gave two pennies in the offering. That's all she could give, and she gave from her heart, okay? And then these other rich people give a thousand here, they get this, and they gave that. That's good too. That's nothing wrong with that. But Jesus, for some reason, pointed out this woman. And as she's given the two pennies more than everyone else, and I asked the Lord, I said, what's the key? And he says, the heart. Amen. Doesn't matter what you give, give with your whole heart. You see? So maybe you only have two pennies, but your return is going to be a hundred bucks. You see what I'm saying? It's with the heart. So some people come and say, well, I can't give a whole lot to the church. I'm not asking for you to do, give a whole lot to the church. Just give your heart. God will take your stuff and just multiply it. Stop living yourself. I'm on a fixed income. I can't really give. See, you're in a bound income. You think you can't. Miracles come in cans. They don't come in cans. Amen. I can't. I can't. I shouldn't. Stop saying that. Hello? So, you get a cloth or two. Cut her all up and say, all right, God, guide me and direct me. So I can place it. Okay, so we're going to get everybody as close to this as you can. And uh, kids are welcome to, listen, children doesn't stop the God. What did Jesus say about kids? He says, suffer them not to come unto me. All the disciples were so concerned, was going to irritate this and going to, Jesus loved kids. They, get them up here and let's all pray. So if you can, come on up. What you're going to do is you're going to put, you're going to release and agree with me. I'm going to pray. You're going to agree. Okay. <laughs> all right. Come on up and lay hands just right on that table. All I need for you to do is agree with my words and say, in the name of Jesus, it's done. Okay, when I'm done. Now, do you believe? Did I give you enough scripture to act on? All right, Lord, you hear our faith. You see? Lord, this is something you called into order. You asked for this. So we're coming into agreement right now. Anybody gets within 25 feet in diameter of these anointed things will begin to think about God. If they have any evil spirits, they will leave. And the pe person will s stay open. Their eyes will open, their ears will open, and they'll begin to see that there is a God. And Lord God, we thank you that anybody comes in with this, the spirit is bound. No weapon formed against where these anointings are, only the presence and peace of God. Father, we know that once we release it in Jesus' name, it's done. The, the very item will do the work because your prayer and your anointing's in it, not because of the item. Father, we do this in Jesus' name. Say in Jesus' name, I call it done. Jesus name, we call it done. Amen. All right. Now, I'm going to leave that right there.